Oh my goodness. What's up, everybody? You know, welcome to the live stream. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get things started. I don't want to waste any time. So let's jump right into it. So um, as you can see, we got four things on our list that we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, and today's topic is business credit. Now, we're going to have different topics, right? Like sometimes we're going to talk about real estate. Sometimes we're going to be talking about consumer credit. If you have any credit repair you know, questions or just um, how to improve your credit type of questions. But today, this is for my business owners or aspiring entrepreneurs, right? So we're going to go through first the different types of business credit mistakes, what I would call as the most common business credit mistakes. Some I see a lot, you know, um, all the time I'm seeing, you know, different comments. I read all of my comments, or at least I try to read all of my comments on YouTube. Um, and I'm streaming live on Facebook too. So shout out to you guys. But, you know, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching calls all the time. I have my Green Scale Academy students, right, that I communicate with on a daily basis. Um, but, you know, time and time again, I see these like top five things that I'm going to be talking about. So I want to really nail it and drive it, right? Because these things are easily avoidable and these mistakes are very common. So starting off with guys, uh, you know, you don't want to jump the gun when it comes to business credit. Okay. Now I've been watching, um, I've been following a lot of the track and field, right? Cause we're in the outdoor season right now, you know, uh, watching the 100 and the 400, you know, the hurdles, all that good stuff. But uh, it's the same thing with business credit, right? Uh, what happens when you have a false start? You get a DQ, right? And especially in Olympics, sometimes just one uh, false start, just one DQ will get you kicked out of the entire race, right? So when it comes to building your business credit, don't jump the gun. I want you to make sure that you don't get disqualified, leading to unnecessary denials, right? So how do you do that? Right. You want to make sure that you have the eight keys of having a legitimate, incredible business. If you haven't seen that YouTube video that I made called How to Qualify for Business Credit, you need to check that out because oftentimes I see people just applying for stuff when they don't have their ducks in a row. Right. I know I have a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of other people have uh, many YouTube videos out there just showcasing and featuring and letting you guys know about different vendor accounts um, and things like that that you can sign up for. But you got to have a legitimate business, right? You got to make sure you have those eight keys first and foremost. Uh, thank you, Elmo. I worked hard on this little screen setup. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to have like a, my goal is to have like a little ESPN sports center vibe where we can have, you know, the different topics uh, lined up, but I'm not too uh, tech savvy with the graphics, but I found out this was uh, hopefully it's good enough. Now, um, I want you to think about your strategy, right? When you start building business credit, I want you to try to figure out first, what is your end goal? Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're looking to uh, get credit cards, you're going to take a different approach than somebody who's looking to get loans, right? It may not make sense for you to sign up for a bunch of net 30 accounts uh, when initially you're trying to get, you know, big loans. Right. So maybe Credit Strong may be good for you, but also Credit Strong may not be good for somebody who just wants credit cards. Or matter of fact, let me put it like this. Are you looking to get micro loans, micro funding, which is 50,000 and under? Because, again, you know, that's credit cards like American Express and, you know, things like that. But at the same time, if you know that you really want to get six figure funding and six figure loans, whether it be a business line of credit or a traditional loan or alternative loan, the way you approach building business credit should be 
uh, specific to that goal. So I want you guys to start thinking about strategies. Don't just start, you know, willy nilly applying for things. Right. And that leads me to the next point. Don't become a net 30 junkie. <laughs> All right. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, there's really no reason that you should be signing up for 10 net 30 accounts. Now, I understand, you know, 10, 15, you know, double digit net, net 30 accounts. Right. I understand that if you have bad credit, like bad personal credit, you definitely want to sign up for more than somebody with, that has, let's say, an excellent FICO score. Right. But you want to look at these net 30 accounts as stepping stones. All right. These are something that's going to help you build a foundation, a solid foundation of business credit. And then you should be leveling up. Right. So if you have bad credit, like, for example, I would suggest you get, you know, five tier one net 30s to begin with. And then you go into tier two to help you avoid those unnecessary denials. Right. But if you have excellent credit, then there is obviously going to be a shortcut for you. Maybe you only need two or three net 30 accounts and then you can jump right into getting a gas car. Right. You can jump right into getting a credit card like American Express or Chase Inc. If you have a 700 plus FICO score. So, again, guys, you want to have a strategy and you want to treat these net 30 accounts like stepping stones. You should not be signing up for like 10 plus net 30 accounts. You're just wasting money. Now, of course, there's one. There's one uh, reason why you could be signing up or should sign up for, you know, a lot of net 30s. And that's if you end up trying, let's say you have two net 30 accounts that only report to Dun & Bradstreet. Uh, and then you have a few more that report to Equifax and Experian. So obviously, you know, you want your goal should be to have at least five net 30s that report to Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax and Experian. You know, that way you have a solid foundation. So then, you know, you know, it may take, you know, multiple net 30s to make sure you do fill in the gaps and have enough across the board. And uh, hey, what's up, Salt River from Pueblo? Um, but yeah, uh, and one delish. Let me go ahead and pull this up. Um, and I'm going to do this. Like anytime you guys have a question, I'm going to just go ahead and answer them. So don't hesitate to ask questions. So one uh, delish asks our virtual offices or excuse me virtual addresses still good to use i kind of gave the answer so you know i'm a big proponent of virtual offices over virtual addresses now the difference between a virtual address and a virtual office is now both of them should be physical addresses right there are some really cheap virtual addresses that you can use and i would stay away from those those are honestly a waste of money because number one, you should never have a PO box, for example, as your as your uh, business address, and you don't want to have like a, a UPS location. So, like some of these, um, some of these really cheap websites, like iPostal. Now, iPostal does have virtual offices as well, but they also have like really cheap virtual addresses that you know don't look good. So, uh, to answer your questions, uh, your question, yes. Uh, a virtual address is still good to use, but I would prefer for you to get a virtual office because a virtual office is somewhere that you can physically go to and you can physically do business there. So a virtual office is something where you can actually rent out a conference room. You can rent out a co-working location. You can actually go there and do an interview if you're trying to hire somebody. Right. These lenders and vendors know the difference between a virtual office and just like if you're just renting like a, a virtual address. So just keep that in mind. As long as it's a physical address that you can do business and you can conduct business. Yes, they're still definitely good to use. And I will always recommend getting one of those over using your home address. All right. Now, um. Remember, I was talking about not being a, a net 30 junkie, right? The last thing I want to talk about about that um, is the pump and dump strategy. So some of you may have heard about pump and dump, but you don't really know um, where or what pump and dump really means. Pump and dump is essentially using a net 30 account or a tier one, any tier one account, let's say for six months in order to you know, level up and get those tier twos and tier threes. And then once you have enough 
tier twos and tier threes, you don't really need to use that tier one anymore and you can just completely stop using it. That's what I mean by stepping stones. And that whole process is called pump and dump. OK, now uh, the next thing I want to talk about in terms of business credit mistakes is I want you guys to quit ignoring the elephant in the room. Now, you know, I, I'm just curious, what do you think I'm talking about when I say quit ignoring the elephant in the room in terms of business credit? Um, matter of fact, I'm going to just go ahead and let you know. So I'm talking about your credit scores, your FICO scores, right? Not your Vantage 3.0 talking about your FICO scores, your FICO scores. Now, a lot of people get into start, you know, begin building business credit solely because their personal credit is, you know, is terrible, right? But if you're going to be building business credit, remember, it takes at least about uh, on it to like really get loans and things. It's going to take you about three months to build business credit. Like I like, don't listen to these people who are lying, saying that you can build business credit in 30 days or two days, like, yeah, you can sign up for a net 30 account. Sure. But some of these lenders and vendors take uh, 30 to 90 days to even begin reporting. So it is going to take time. So in that time that you're beginning, your building business credit process or journey. Why don't you go ahead and work on your personal credit? Because I'm here to tell you, and I tell, I tell, try to tell as many people as I can, as many entrepreneurs as I can, you cannot, <laughs> no matter what you heard, you cannot get six figure loans and six figure funding, right? With bad credit. It's just not going to happen. Now you don't have to have perfect credit. I don't want people to get obsessed with having an 850 credit score. Cause that's a whole nother thing, right? You don't need an 850, right? But you, you just need to have what's considered good credit. You want to aim for a 680 or above. All right. And try to keep it there. But as long as you can get into the 600s, you will be able to get business funding. So don't ignore the elephant in the room. Go ahead and, and get that, you know, immediately, uh, which, leads, which leads me to the next point. OK, so I want you to know the difference between business credit and corporate credit. OK, there is a difference between business credit and corporate credit. All right. I made a, a little reel that, um, you know, caused a little, you know, a little noise. Right. Because a lot of people get this, you know, misconstrued. And it's the fact that you cannot or there is no no there is no such thing as no PGs in business credit. OK. And this is why I say this. And before you, you know, jump in the comments and say, um, oh, you know, I have I, I have new uh, I have a, a no PG business credit card or I have a no I did no PG with this or that. I bought a car. Uh, with no PG. OK, when you buy a car with uh, with your EIN only, that is the perfect example of corporate credit. OK, corporate credit is when you literally uh, get a line of credit or a vendor account. Most of these net 30s are all corporate credit because they're invoicing your business and your business alone EIN only. And then you have to pay back, you know, the full amount in 30 days. Or if you get a car for that, you know, example, it's an installment plan that is uh, billed to only to your EIN, right? To your business. Now, what that's corporate credit. Now, with business credit, business credit always requires a personal guarantee because all it is is a business credit card or business line of credit or business loan that they are extending to the business owner. They are not extending that line of credit to your business. That's why if you get a, a American Express credit card or a Chase Inc or a Capital on Tap or whatever the case may be, it has your name on it and it has your business name because they are extending that line of credit to you based on your personal credit report. Okay? So that's the difference between, you know, corporate credit and business credit. Now, uh, the last thing I want, well, actually two more quick things. Um, and let me just double check, make sure that nobody had a question so far. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and pull this up. So, um, this person says, do you think the credit partners for business credit is officially because someone from wholesale shelf corporation told me it's something new they have? Yes. 
So they're talking about, so I made a video. It didn't get many views. So I doubt any, many of y'all saw it, but I made a video talking about credit partners and this idea that you can actually get or become a, basically a, a personal guarantor for a business owner. If you have really good credit and you essentially become business partners, and then you start making thousands and thousands of dollars per month because they have to pay you a percentage of their minimum monthly payment each month on any deal that they get uh, through using your credit as the uh, you know personal guarantor. Now, yes, this is something new. So as I said in the video, it was something I learned about. And uh, it's, it's something new. Like right now, they are trying to get as many credit partners as they can so that they can have a big enough inventory to start finding business owners to partner with. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please you know, check out that video that I made um, uh, in the thumbnail. Uh, it says literally, you know, become a credit partner and, you know, make make money passively. So, yes, that's something new. And it hasn't been around for a long time. Uh, but that's why I wanted to make that video to ask you guys how you feel about it. And I still want to know how you guys feel about it. But to be honest, that that video just didn't get many views. So I still um, I'm really interested in let the, you know, find out what you guys think about that. Uh, all right. We got another question. Do you build business credit for trust with an EIN? Um, if I'm being honest, I honestly don't know the answer to that question because I've never, I don't have a trust. I don't have any trust. So I'm not going to lie to you and, and tell you, I know something when I don't, uh, apologies for that, but, um, I would definitely, you know, consult with a CPA or, you know, someone who's like a tax professional to find out exactly how you would go about doing so. I try to stay in my lane, guys. If I don't know, I don't know. You will never find me on anybody's podcast talking crazy. I can promise you that. <laughs> um, now, Salt River says, can you talk about net terms, uh, net term accounts versus revolving? Yes. So just like personal credit, you have installment accounts and you have revolving accounts. Revolving means once you like you have a minimum payment, you got a line of credit. And let's say if you, you know, max out a credit card and then pay out the full balance, that account stays open. So uh, an installment loan or installment account is a loan. So when you pay off the loan, the account closes. OK, now on the business credit side. Uh, net terms is just is straightforward, whether it's a net seven, net 15, net 30, whatever that net, then the number after that, that's how many days you have to pay back the full amount. So if it's a net 30 account, the full balance is due in 30 days. Now, I'm glad uh, this person asked this question because there are charge cards as well. A lot of bit. So remember, I talked about the difference between corporate credit and business credit. Right. But I also want you to got you guys to learn the difference between a charge card and a business credit card. There's actually three different types, but actually four different types. If I'm being honest, you have a store card, you have a charge card, you have a credit card and then you have a corporate card. The biggest difference between most of these are two things. Can you shop outside of this store? Right. So, for example, if you get like Sam's, they have a Sam's uh, corporate card where you can, you know, shop on net 30 terms the whole amount is due in 30 days and you can't shop anywhere else. But then they also have a Sam's MasterCard and you can use that Sam's MasterCard anywhere. You know, you can go shopping outside of Sam's. Right. So uh, that's really the big difference between, you know, net term accounts and uh, revolving accounts. And then one more example, Divi. A lot of people don't uh, know that Divi is not a business credit card. Divi is a business charge card. When you use, when you swipe your Divi card, um, all of your, like your, all of the totals of the, the transactions you had all week, they get uh, automatically drafted out of your business checking account like every Friday or every Tuesday, you know, it's one day of the week. It's a net seven account. That's an example of a net seven, the Divi, uh, Divi car. Then there's other gas cars that do the same thing. They are net seven or net 15. 
All right. The only difference between Divi and those is Divi automatically drafts your uh, drafts out of your your business checking account through ACH. Um, and most gas cars still require you to log on to a website and make the payment. All right. Any other questions real quick? All right. So um, real quick. OK, so this person said I was talking about credit partners because I'm a business I'm a business owner and looking to get funding because my credit is not ready yet. OK, so so you would be. So remember, you have credit partners and then you have uh, the business partners. So you would be on the business side. So um, I would definitely click the link under the video to find out if when you go to the credit partners website, if they have the business partners ready. But I do know that they're going to come out with a whole different website just for the business owners. But they are going to be making updates on the credit partners website to let you know um, when those when they have enough credit partners to start opening up the window uh, or the you know floodgates to give you access to the business partners. But there are there are definitely business partners out there. But to be completely honest, I would have to get back to you on exactly how you can become a business partner. But I'm almost certain whoever you were talking to from the wholesale shelf corpse because they're like a partner uh, business with credit partner, I would definitely reach back out to that person and they could tell you how to become a business partner. Now, um, this is uh, this is fun. So this is something I wanna uh, talk about real quick. Um, I made a poll, right? I made a poll in uh, the community tab on my YouTube channel and I asked a question, okay? I asked a question and this question was, what do you guys think the most important business credit score is? OK, what did you guys think the most or what do you think the most important business credit score is? OK. And uh, to my surprise, I'm about to pull it up right now. Pretty much everybody <laughs> chose uh, Dun & Bradstreet. OK. Now, I'm going to break down exactly why this is not the answer. OK, so let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. So. All right, there we go. So I did this poll, right? And this poll shows that most of you guys, OK, most of you guys think that Dun & Bradstreet is the most important business credit uh, score, the payday score. And I completely understand why most of you are thinking Dun & Bradstreet is the most important business credit score. Mo I, in my opinion, I'm probably thinking this, thinking that you guys chose this because Dun & Bradstreet is the largest business credit bureau because they're international. If you don't know Dun & Bradstreet, uh, is international. It's not like, you know, something that's just in America. Right now, I want to explain why Dun & Bradstreet is not and why. Matter of fact, real quick, I want you guys to just write in the comments. Now that you know Dun & Bradstreet is not the answer, I want you to go ahead and put in the comments what you think it is. All right. You got three options. Is it Experian? Is it FICO, SPSS? Or is it Equifax? OK, and this is a good one. So uh, Architect 360 Philadelphia says, in my experience, DMB is good for net and gas cards. Most credit card companies use Experian business and Equifax business. And uh, they are the two main players. I love that. I love that answer. Um, pretty much uh, most of you guys. Are, are getting it. Most of you guys are getting it. Okay. So let me go ahead and show you, let me share my screen again. And I'm going to show you something different. Okay. I'm going to literally break down what it is and why. Now, if you, if any of you uh, attended my free webinar, you already know the answer. So don't cheat. <laughs> you already know the answer, but um, okay. Let, let me show you this. Okay. This is straight from my, uh, my webinar. All right. It is the FICO SBSS. All right. 
what is the FICO SPSS? Most people don't know what it is. And that's why like nobody really answered it or didn't choose it. Okay. But the FICO SPSS is the SBA score. Okay. The small business administration score It's the score that they use and most lenders use. The reason why is because it's a combination of your personal and your business credit scores. All right. And I want you guys to really get to know um, <laughs> Queen, Queenie B was right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let you brag. I'm going to let you brag. Now, yes, the, the FICO SPS. So the FICO SPS score can also and this is something that most people don't know. You can actually swap it out like the business, the lenders and vendors who are um, going to apply. They're going to review your application. You got to think like them. Right. So instead of them trying to look at your Dun & Bradstreet credit report and or your Equifax. Right. Just to try to look at your business credit like they really want to know um, how well or what is your history of repayments, right? Do you pay on time? Are you late? Do you have high credit card balances? Are you carrying high credit card balances, right? So they are going to look at your FICO SPSS because it's going to give them a snapshot of both your personal and your business. Now, Experian, your Experian personal credit report and your Experian business credit score. So for all of you, so for all of you who said Experian, technically you were right too. All right? So the answer is FICO SBSS, but remember your FICO SBSS is a combination of your business personal, I'm sorry, your business experience and your personal experience. And it ranges from zero to 300. Okay. Um, and uh, the next thing I want to uh, show you guys is, hold on, give me one second. All right. So now, Let's talk about the small business scoring service, right? Because that's what it stands for. The FICO SPSS stands for the small business scoring service. Now, how can you improve it, right? Now that we know that this is the cream of the crop, right? It's pretty self-explanatory, but you want to definitely make sure that you repair your credit or improve your credit to above a 700. That should be your goal. That's why I took the time to say Quit ignoring the elephant in the room because it could be the one thing holding you back, especially for a business line of credit. The very first thing that happens when you apply for a business line of credit is they're going to check your credit report. OK, most of the time you're experienced. So if you're if you're not right on that front, you're going to get denied. OK, that's just you know the truth of the matter. Then you're going to uh, want to build business credit. OK, establish that foundation. Right. Then you want to make sure that you continue to manage your business finance as well. How do you do that? Keep a healthy cash reserve. That's one of the most important things. OK, now I know it can be hard, but try your best not to empty your business checking funds every month. Like you want to try to keep a healthy cash reserve. The higher the amount that you keep in your business, <clears throat> in your business checking account, excuse me the better your bank rating is and the more money they're going to lend to you. There's something called your maximum credit recommendation, your MCR and your MCR, your maximum credit recommendation is the direct reflection of your personal and business credit scores, your FICO SPS score. And that's how they decide how much they're going to approve you for. Okay. And obviously the rest comes with time. So the longer you're in business and the longer your track record, the better your FICO SBSS score will be. So hopefully you guys learned something new, right? That's what, that's what it's all about. I want to teach you guys uh, as much as I can on this channel. Now, uh, the next thing I want to talk about, okay, we already talked about uh, I actually skipped over. <laughs> I, I went ahead and told you about the most important uh, business credit score and why. So I actually skipped number two, but now we're going to go back to number two and let's talk about the ugly truth about Dun & Bradstreet, right? That's what the thumbnail says, right? So that's what you, why my, most of you uh, came here. So let's talk about it. So what the heck is Kelvin talking about? Okay. What is Dun & Bradstreet doing? 
So to paint this picture, the first thing I want to talk about, okay, is what Dun & Bradstreet services are out there. And then by the end of this, you'll understand exactly where I'm coming from, okay? So Dun & Bradstreet, they offer what? A Dun's number. They offer you a business credit score, right? That's the, uh, you know, the biggest and most important thing that they offer, right? Let me share my screen and show you uh, what I'm talking about. So Dun & Bradstreet, okay? This is something that a lot of you already know and may have experienced yourself. But when you go to get your Dun's number, they're gonna they're gonna try to make it seem like it's it's uh like you gotta pay to get a Dun and Bradstreet number, right? You do not have to pay this two twenty nine to get your Dun and Bradstreet number. They hide it is is way down here in this little fine print, but you can get it for free. Never ever ever pay for your Dun and Bradstreet number, your Dun's number, with one exception, and that's just for whatever reason. If you can't wait the thirty days then you can pay, you know, the 229 and then you'll get it in a matter of one week instead of four weeks. Ooh, but uh, you don't need to pay for a Dunn's number. Now let's talk about uh, how to check your business credit score, right? They have this service. Uh, they have actually three different plans. The free plan, which is virtually like useless. You get nothing um, outside of a 14 day trial, but then you get credit signal. Right. So credit signal and credit monitor is going to allow you to actually monitor your scores and see all of your business credit scores. Because guess what? A lot of you, a lot of you guys may not know, but your pay debt score is just one of like six Dun & Bradstreet scores. All right. So you really got to get to know the ins and outs of business credit, because I'm, I'm here to tell you the Dun & Bradstreet pay debt score is the easiest part about building uh, business credit, because all you need is to have three payments across two different trade lines and then bam you got an 80 you got an 80 pay that score but that's not that's really not going to get you approved anywhere it's about what's on your full credit report um where you know you'll see everything right you'll see your uh delinquency predictor uh score you'll see your actual dmb rating which is a combination of letters and numbers you got to get to know stuff and of course i cover that all in green school academy if you needed to know now, the next thing that they have is uh, the builder, the credit builder program, right? So with the credit builder program, they have the $149 a month for the credit builder plus, and they have the credit builder premium, which is 200 bucks a month, right? Now, you either get unlimited or you get 12 trade references. What do I mean by that? It allows you to report through the back door to Dun & Bradstreet, okay? That's what it is. So they want you to pay $150 a month to report to uh, Dun & Bradstreet up to 12 trade references, okay? Now, okay, that's not a big deal, right? So you're probably, you know, wondering, okay, Kelvin, like, you know, what's the big deal? Like, that's not, uh, you know, really a deal breaker, right? Well, let me explain something. Let me explain something to you. So Dun & Bradstreet is doing something where they are literally breaking contracts with a lot of your favorite vendor accounts, net 30s, you know, net 60s, and then, you know, further some charge cards and everything, right? Dun & Bradstreet is greedy. Let's just call it what it is. If you are a business owner, I can pretty much guarantee that you've been called from Dun & Bradstreet and they have, you know, tried to upsell you in some way. Right. Whether it be to pay a couple thousand dollars, a couple hundred dollars, they'll help you out, do this, that and the third. So whether it be, for example, um, there's some I'm not going to name any names, but there are some vendor accounts that I have featured on my business uh, credit channel that they used to report to Dun & Bradstreet. And then all of a sudden they stopped reporting to Dun & Bradstreet. That's not any that's not at the fault of the the service is because Dun & Bradstreet wants you to pay that 150 or that $200 a month. I would not be surprised if we we uh you know a couple of months from now, a couple of years from now that nobody reports directly to Dun & Bradstreet. 
they don't like the fact that there are services out there that just for 15 bucks a month or just for 50 bucks a month, they will report your payment history to Dun & Bradstreet. They would rather you depend on them to pay the 200 or the 150. Like that's just, that's the truth, right? Um, and, and that's the thing. So like, for example, yeah. So Salt River says, you know, yet DNB admits that it only publishes, you know, 26 of the self-reported trade lines, which is crazy, right? Um, so Stephanie says, they told me I didn't have a Duns number, but when I Googled my business, it showed me that you uh, that you had a Duns number. Yeah, like the first thing you do when you when you try to figure out like you started a business and you are unsure, you go to their website and you do a simple search. You check to see uh, by you know they ask you to type in like the name of your business and then like the the zip code or the address. And then yeah, most of the time you may have all if you if you've been in business for a year or more. Even if you've never built business credit, you probably have a DUNS number. Yet they want you to pay two thirty, <laughs> right, to get one. So I just want you, you guys, to know because you know sometimes I get people uh, that will DM me. Like I had, I'm, I'm not joking. I had this guy DM me on IG saying he's going to expose me because I made a video about a service and said that they reported Dun and Bradstreet. Like two years ago, news flash, guys, business credit cha changes. It changes frequently, right? Like literally, there are things that happen in business, right? If you have a business, you know, you got to pivot. So if Dunner Bradstreet is taking this approach and they no longer want any um, of these like um, e-commerce businesses or, you know, mom and pop shops too. If they no longer want anybody to be able to provide the service of business credit reporting, they only want you to pay for their service. Because you got to keep in mind, in the pandemic in 2020 to now, all of a sudden, you had all of these people quitting their jobs and starting a business. I, I can't say I was one of them. I started my business in 2019, so I was a little early, but... For most of you, you started your business in the pandemic. So you started watching YouTube and you wanted to learn about business credit. Guess what? DNB was watching YouTube too. <laughs> so they found out, oh, there's a whole new opportunity where we can make more money and we can increase our bottom line if we get them hooked on our uh, credit monitoring plus the credit builder program. Now, don't get me wrong. It's valuable. And, you know, if you want to pay the money, sure, go right ahead. If you have a lot of vendors that don't report to anybody, but there's still plenty of vendors that report uh, to Experian, Equifax, Paynet, uh, Credit Safe, Ansania, Moody Analytics. These third party vendors, they report to Dun & Bradstreet, but not directly to Dun & Bradstreet, right? I um, mean, and, and then there's a such thing called your uh, your lender consortium um, experiences on Experian, right? Where if you have, let's say, a gas card or a lot of these different charge cards that report to the SBFE, the Small Business Financial Exchange, that payment information and that whole account shows up on your Experian business credit report, your IntelliScore. Right. So I just want I want you guys to start focusing more on Experian, Equifax and Credit Safe and the Small Business Financial Exchange. Those, in my opinion, are much more valuable. OK, so another thing, Experian is super, super valuable. I know I said the FICO SBS score is the most important, but right below that, or pretty much at the same, because you know it is your Experian, uh, you know FICO SBS is all about Experian. Your Experian is super important, guys, because let me tell you something. Everybody wants to get into Airbnb. Everybody wants to do short-term, mid-term rentals, and you want to get into you know uh, doing real estate investing. Well, guess what? No matter how good your um, your personal credit score is or your business credit score, for the most part, like you're, I'm sorry, your Dun & Bradstreet pay that score. If you got that pretty 80, it, it just looks good, but it does nothing. 
if you apply for a lease, a commercial lease, and you're trying to do a sublet or you're trying to do rental arbitrage and you want to apply at a condo, they're going to pull and check your Experian business credit report. Okay. They're not going to check your, your personal. They're going to check your Experian business credit report. And if that doesn't look good, you're going to get denied. So even if you got a, a pretty 90 payday score, right? If you have a 25 on your Experian and Telescore, you're not going to be able to rent or lease. Okay. So that's really, really important. All right. So I wanted to point that out. And then um, uh, one, one more thing I want to talk about before I open up the line uh, or, you know, open up the, the door to ask just you guys uh, questions, uh, something I skipped over. And this is something I talked about or touched on earlier as well. So I only want you guys to sign up for services that benefit you. OK, let me repeat that. I only want you guys to sign up for services that benefit you. OK, what do I mean by that? It really doesn't matter how great a product or service is. Right. You first got to ask yourself. What's the purpose of this product? OK, what what problem does it solve? And secondly, is that problem is the problem that the product or service solves related to me? OK, now or or your current circumstances. Now, if it doesn't, don't sign up. There's no need to waste your money. OK, now, why am I saying this right now? Some of you may be surprised or some of you are surprised sometimes when you comment under a video and you ask, well, have you used this service? And I'm like, no, I don't have a need to. So, for example, somebody asked me, uh, do you did you buy a wholesale shelf court? Because I made videos about shelf courts. Have you used that service? I'm like, no, because my business is uh, four years old. And why, like, I don't have a need to buy a shelf court because I built my business credit from the ground up. So there's no reason for me to buy a shelf court. People ask me, have you, have you signed up for this credit builder? And I'm like, I have good credit. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to use every service that I talk about on YouTube if it doesn't make sense for me to use it. OK, so that's what I mean. Some of you just get in the habit of just signing up for things because it sounds good. But again, you want to make sure that you decide or figure out, OK, what is the service score again? What does it do? OK, does that apply to me before you start signing up for things willy nilly? OK, uh, now, with that being said, let's open up the let's open up the lines. I want to uh, answer some questions. Let's do a Q&A. Uh, that's what most of you came here for. So uh, it's, the time is now, you know, drop your questions. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I will be pulling up. A lot of your questions, you know, back to back to back. I want to get them rolling. This is your time. If you ever wanted a business credit coaching from me right now is the time. Let's do it live. OK, let's do it live. Let's do it live. All right. Now, um, the first question I have is uh, let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to pull this up. So this person says Shirtsy has yet to report to anybody since I bought two shirts from them plus the 99 annual fee. So let me explain something about Shirtsy. Okay. Shirtsy, the way it works is yes, you pay the annual fee that gives you access to the net 30 account. Then the only thing they report after that point is whenever you make a purchase. So if you bought two shirts from them, right. And they report it, then that's like, that's the only thing that they really have to report is that option. It's not like a monthly subscription. So you would have to continue to make more purchases in order for them to report. Now, let me know. Um, do you like, did you buy anything else since you bought those two shirts? Because that would be why they stopped reporting because they report your payment history. So if you've only bought them, then, um, you know, that would be the only thing they have to report. Um, another comment or a question. So you said you have you've been with NAV for over four months and they have yet to report to Dun & Bradstreet. NAV reports to Dun & Bradstreet. OK, they definitely do. So if you're not seeing anything after four months, that means you have missed 
matched data. What do I mean by that? I want you to log into your Dun & Bradstreet. Um, once you log into your nav account on your phone or on a computer, and I want you to go to the settings and I want you to check your business info. When you go to business info, you're going to see uh, the three different addresses and the three different business names as Experian, Equifax, and Dun & Bradstreet are currently reporting it. If you see a misspelling in your in the name, or if let's say your business has LLC at the end of the name, but they don't have it, that's mismatched data. If you see the wrong address, that will be why you don't see anything reporting to Dun & Bradstreet. One little trick that you can do, let's say it's the wrong address. You can go ahead and click the button that says, um, this is not my business. And once you click, this is not my business, it's going to take away whatever version of your business that it think is yours. And then you get to research. You get to click the button, um, find my business for, let's say, Dun & Bradstreet, because that's what's not reporting. And then you're going to put in the correct address and the correct name, and hopefully you find it. If you can't find it, that means you need to go to Dun & Bradstreet's website. You need to pull up your, your Dun & Bradstreet profile. If you don't have one, it's easy to sign up. It's free. And then you want to correct and update your business information. I want you to verify and update your business name. It needs to be exactly the way it is uh, with the IRS and with the Secretary of State. Same thing with your business address. If you've changed your business address, you need to change that everywhere across the board because this is what happens. Pe people get frustrated because things aren't reporting and it's because there's mismatched data. If you ever change your business name, if you ever change your business address, you have to change and update that starting with the Secretary of State, then with the IRS, then with Dun & Bradstreet, then with Experian, then with Equifax, and then with all of your open and active uh, trade accounts. I know, I know it can be a, a tedious task, but it has to be done if you don't want to um, have things not report. Okay. So you definitely want to do that. And I promise you it will start, it'll show up. It'll show up. All the things that you've been paying for will show up after you make that change. Okay. Um, but for the people who don't like Shirtsy, remember there's a business t-shirt club as well. The only difference is Shirtsy reports to all three, Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian. And, um, Business T-shirt club only reports to like Experian or Equifax. I can't remember exactly exactly which one, but they only report to do and not all three. All right. So remember, you want to make sure you check that info. OK, if if you if you say that everything is correct, I want you to do one thing. I want you to go to Dun & Bradstreet, check your business info. And then if everything is correct, I want you to call Dun & Bradstreet. I'm going to call NAV if you didn't un. If you didn't remove your business and add it again, remember, I want you to go to nav, remove your business, say, this is not my business and then re and then add it again and everything should show up. OK. Um, one to list says, what is the best way to change your home address to virtual office? My landlady passed away. Sorry to hear that. And um, how do you change it with the IRS? So with the IRS, you just the same process you went through when you. Um, filed or you created your EIN, you go right back to the irs.gov website and you can update it that way. Um, now, in terms of changing uh, your home address to a virtual office, it's pretty simple. All you do is you go to either, now my two recommendations, because I've used them both, is DaVinci Virtual, D-A-V-I-N-C-I, -I, DaVinci Virtual or Alliance Virtual Office. So those are two great websites that you can loot that you can use uh, to go to their website, browse, you know, find you a nice looking building. Um, and then once you purchase it, they're going to do two things. They're going to give you your new business address and then they're going to give you a registered agent. So you don't have to list yourself, because even if you change your home address to a virtual office address, if you still put yourself or list a family member or whoever 
as your as your registered agent, your registered agent, their personal information is still up there. Their phone number and their uh, physical address is up there. So Alliance and, Di and Da Vinci is going to give you, you do have to pay an extra fee, but they will give you a registered agent. Okay. So that's, it's pretty simple. It's all you got to do. And then you update it across the board and you don't want to miss, you know, miss anything. Make sure it's updated everywhere. Um, Mr. Grind, Mr. Grind Tom 80 says, can you lose your DUNS number? Uh, no, you can't lose your DUNS number. Now, if you if you close your business and you open a new one, you have to get a new EIN and a new DUNS number. But your DUNS number is linked to your actual uh, your business. OK, so the only way you lose it is if you lose your business or you close your business and start a new one. So, yeah, you won't lose your DUNS number. You don't have to worry about that. Um, OK. How to update the SIT code with Experian because NAV shows me as an electric company and I'm a DJ company. I'm glad you asked that question. Um, so I'm going to give you guys the, the website. As cliche as this sounds, this is the website. OK, matter of fact, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to take you to the website and show you how you do it and where you do it. So. Let's see. You want to go to businesscreditfacts.com, okay? That's the name of the website. So when you come to businesscreditfacts.com, uh, you are going to simply, uh, let's say you scroll down here. You see right here where it says update my report? That's what you're going to, that's what you're going to click. Once you click update my report, you type in the company name, the address, the city, the state, the postal code. Um, and then you're going to find it. OK, so matter of fact, let me just um, pick a random business. So let's say Shell gas station on 123. Well, matter of fact, I'm not going to put on the address. Let's see if it just lets me. Uh, So when you come here and you type in the address, all you got to do is look there and then you're going to find it. And then you're going to see multiple um, you're going to see multiple options up there. Right. And once you do that, you're going to. So look, this is really important. I, I'm so glad you asked this question. OK, so check me out. You see how there is multiple different shell um, shell companies. Obviously, it's a gas station. Right. And you see all these addresses. Now, there was a guy, and um, if, you're, if you're watching, I want you to please comment so I can bring you up. The, so I did a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a guy, and I, I promise, no, no kidding, I was able to help him bring up his Experian uh, score from a 25 to like a 90 in minutes, like that. All I did was you know share my screen just like I'm doing with you guys. We typed in his, his business name and the address. And this is what happened. He saw like three different variations of his business with his old address. And then he had one with the correct address. So two with like two old addresses and one with the correct address. This is what you do. And let's say this is your business, right? You come over here, you click update my company information. They're going to ask you for your name and your information as the business owner first. Once you click continue, it's going to take you to a dispute page. Once you get to that dispute page, you're going to literally tell them this is not my correct address. This is the correct address. You do the same thing with the SIT code. OK, go to the website. OK, I'm going to show you NAICS.com. You come here and once you get here, you're going to search for your NAICS code or your SIT code. OK, this is this is where you come if you want to browse the SIT codes and the NAICS codes. Right. Um, and once you once you do that and you figure out what your SIT code is. So you said you're in the uh, you're a DJ. Right. 
So I don't know what your sit code is, but if you want to play around with it and try to figure out exactly what it is, um, you know, maybe you come down to services and then you just drill down until you find uh, what your, um, you know, what your business is. So let's say uh, just for the sake of like saving time, let's say you're a photographer. So you come to photographer, you do portraits. Okay. So um, down here it says, home photographer. Let's say that's what you do. Now, there's only 219 businesses with that. Uh, oh, let's say you do portraits. That's what most photographers are. So here's your sit code. So you're going to take that sit code. And when you come back over here and you click update my payment and from my company information, you're going to update your address or update just a sit code, whatever it is. Right. But to back to my example, that's how you do it. But back to my example, um, we did that. So every, um, search result that had the wrong address we clicked update my company information and we um, put in the correct information so what happened was when you have mismatched data let's say that these three shells are really the same company but there's three different addresses but this is the correct address but these two are incorrect that means you probably have um you probably have two trade lines reporting to this one, two trade lines reporting to that one, and only one trade line reporting to this one. So when you update your, your information on all three of these um, variations, they're going to combine onto one credit report. And that's how his score literally just like that flipped to from a 25 to like a 90 because all he got credit for all of those uh, trade lines that were all over the place. Okay. So that's something you want to do and you want to make sure that you always up update, uh, your, your sit codes and, and everything else, like everything needs to match. Okay. Um, and Hey, uh, pencil head family from Sacramento. Uh, thanks for joining in. Okay. So you said the, I didn't see your, your, you know, I was sharing the screen, so I couldn't see your code. So you got your code. All right. Now, um, do we have any other questions, guys? Um, thank you, uh, Terry. Uh, Terry says, this is gold. I appreciate you. And thanks for coming. Rachel said, I'm over here dropping gems. I'm trying, I'm trying. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but again, um, sound right. Mobile DJs. Thank you so much for those questions. I think you, added value to this live stream how you guys feel about this live stream do you want me to do this like every sunday because like i said that's what i'm thinking about doing um hopefully you guys are enjoying yourself uh, do you have do you guys have any other questions i'm just scrolling to see if i missed something let's see let's see let's see let's see all right so salt river you said i have a i have a business with multiple trade lines including two American Express cars and and yet none of them uh, trade lines show up on Dun & Bradstreet. Yeah. So remember, <laughs> so how, well, how long have you had these American Express uh, Express trade um, credit cards? I'm curious because American Express reports to all three. They report to Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax and Experian. If if you did sign, if you just uh, if you just started, if you just opened up that account like a, two months ago, it can take time. It can literally take up to ninety days, about five months. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure there are no uh, you know mismatched data. But Salt River. So one thing I want to tell you about, right? This is the most unfortunate thing about business credit, right? So when you check your business credit report, no matter if it's Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, they will never show you the name of the trade line. So in my opinion, um, it may be up there. It may be up there. But if not, you want to call Dun & Bradstreet and let them know you have something that's not reporting. You also want to go. I want you to do this. I want you to go to your American Express online account i want you to log in and i want you to go to that business information section and i want you to verify that everything is up to date and correct and then if you see that's up to date and correct then go over to dun and bradstreet 
and let them know and try to, you know, figure out why it's not up there. But again, um, yes, Ernest, this is going to be on YouTube. Well, this is on YouTube now, but it's going to be like when I end the live stream, it's going to stay on YouTube. All you got to do is go to the live stream section on my pro on my account, on my uh, channel, and you'll see it. Uh, gas cars. You want me to talk about gas cars, Sacha? Um, straightforward. OK, gas cars are tier two uh, accounts. OK, what I mean by that is. Well, matter of fact, I take a step back. Gas cars can be considered tier one as well, but just know. One of two things have to happen. If your business is at least three months old, you can get a gas car uh, with no PG, right? But most gas cars will require a PG. So there's a little trick that I teach on my channel called the exit application strategy. And you can do this with all gas cars. All you got to do, uh, choose a gas car that you want to apply for. Fill out the application, put in all your information all the way to the end, right? But don't submit it. When you see that submit button and you get to the end, just exit out. Just exit out of the whole window. And I promise you within 24 to 48 hours, depending on if you do it on the weekend, you know, but one or two business days, you're going to be contacted by a sales rep, whether it be through phone or through email, okay? When they call you, or they email you, you're going to want to apply with that person over the phone. And if, and of course, if you wish to do no PG, because you know, those are corporate cards, then you can actually go ahead and tell them that. And then they'll go ahead and tell you like, okay, if they need your social security number, they'll let you know, Hey, we need it, but it's only for identity verification. We're not going to pull your credit. So that's one trick about gas cars, but gas cars are great. Gas cards can be uh, your shortcut to getting real business credit cards because those are revolving accounts and you want to have a good mix of credit. It's just like personal credit, right? You want to have loans, which is installment accounts and revolving accounts. And in this, in this case with business credit, you want to also have term accounts, which is the net 30s, the net you know, 10s and things like that. Okay. So and last thing I'll tell you about gas cars is there's something I've been through this. Like I was literally on the phone, uh, you know, a little frustrated just a few days ago with a gas car company. Um, and a lot of these gas car companies use these websites that are they're just terrible. Right. But you want to make sure that when you use these gas cars, you know, the most important thing about it. And that's when is the payment due? There are some gas cars that have a MasterCard logo, right? Those gas cars are a actual like a business credit card. Those require PG. So whenever you're applying for a gas card, you need to know, are you applying for just a regular gas car? Like any of the Wex brand gas cars that just have the gas station with no uh, co-brand logo? Or are you applying for a gas car that has the MasterCard symbol on it? Because if you're applying for the gas car with the with the you know the symbol on it, the MasterCard symbol is gonna be a, a business credit card and not a corporate card. And um, if you're just joining me, remember the business credit cards always require a PG. So just know that going in. But you want to find out when it's due. Some gas cars are due on net thirty terms. Some are like net seven or net 15. So you want to know that so you don't miss that payment. And most importantly, you don't want to pay any gas cards too soon. There are some that let's say today is Sunday um, and you you know went and got gas on your gas card. Well, when you log in the next day, the next business day, uh, and you check your balance, they're going to show you that balance and you can pay it. You can pay it too soon. There's a, there is a there's two different balances. There's the unpaid balance and then there's the invoiced balance. Do not pay until the invoice is, the invoice comes out. If you pay before the invoice is generated, you might as well just use your debit card. You're not going to get business credit. Um, you're not going to get credit for that. It's not going to report. It's, that's like a cash transaction. So never pay the unpaid 
I'm sorry, never pay the unbilled balance, only pay the invoiced balance. And then also some gas cars will just tally up all of your transactions and then charge you one uh, you know, lump sum balance once per month. So you want to make sure you know what the payment terms are before you start spending. OK. Um, Platinum Plug says, can you still automate your credit? I don't know what you mean by that, but if you mean are there autopilot um, trade lines out there or, or trade references? Yes. So I made a video, a really popular one called how to build business credit on autopilot. The way you do it is you simply just build business credit with subscription plans. So for example, nav.com, you know, where you check your business credit scores and reports when you get the nav business blue, uh, <laughs> now I can't talk nav business boost plan for what is it? 50, uh, $50, 4995. That's an autopilot, uh, vendor, right? So when you make your monthly, uh, subscription payment, that's going to report to Dunn & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian. That's what we call automating your credit. Uh, hopefully, that's what you meant by automating your credit. But yeah, um, matter of fact, speaking of automate, automating your credit, I recommend each and every single one of you to put your any business credit cards or corporate cards you have on auto pay, okay? Just like personal credit, business credit is all about payment history. You do not want to slip up and miss a payment, guys. It will really hurt your business credit scores. So just put everything on auto pay. You should not be spending anything that you can't pay back within 30 days, to be honest, or at least make the minimum payment. So just keep that in mind. All right. So um, I see a couple of comments that reference e-credible. So platinum plug is e-credible. You know, I love eCredible. OK, I love eCredible. I've used them. I'm still actively subscribed with you with eCredible to this day. And it's been years. I made a, um, a video about them. It's called how to uh, like the fastest way, the fastest and easiest way to build business credit. OK, that was my eCredible video. eCredible is a service that allows you to sign up and you pay like fourteen dollars a month. Uh, or less. I can't remember exactly how much it is, but because <clears throat> it just comes out automatically for me. And for that 14 bucks a month or whatever, however much it is, they will report. OK, they will report to multiple vendors, uh, multiple not vendors, but multiple um, business credit uh, vendors. Right. So Equifax, Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, PayNet, they have like six different um, business credit reporting agencies that re they report to. But here's the thing about eCredible, and I'm glad you brought them up because I'm going to explain something about eCredible and how it works because eCredible is one of those services that a lot of people um, just don't really know how to use it, right? And let me explain how you use it and how it works, okay? So first and foremost, the eCredible subscription itself, right? When you sign up, it reports to Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, Equifax, and Credit Safe. I promise you guys, they do. They still do. The actual subscription itself, that 14, whatever you pay per month, still reports to Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, Equifax, and Credit Safe. Okay. Now, here's the big discrepancy and where people get confused. Okay. The biggest thing about eCredible is. The accounts that you, the additional accounts that you link, because if you don't know, eCredible allows you to link different bills that you pay, okay? Business expense uh, plans, okay? So that could be web hosting. That could be um, even Quill. It could be, you know, different bills that you pay in your business, okay? The big difference is, is it in your name as the business owner? Or is it in the name of your business? There's a big difference between the two. Let me explain. If it's only in your business name, well, if it's only in your name as the business owner, it will not report to Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, Experian, right? All of those. If it's only in your name as the business owner, 
it will only report to credit safe. That's it. It's only going to report to credit safe. Now they used to report to Equifax and credit safe if it was in your name, but they no longer report to Equifax. Okay. So like this person says, eCredible switched up on who they report to now. Yes, that's, that's the truth. And that is the update. Okay. Ecredible currently reports to, again, the subscription itself reports to Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, Equifax, and Credit Safe. But if it's in your name as the business owner, each thing that each additional, okay, each additional account that you link to your Ecredible account will only report to Credit Safe. Now, if it is in your business name, it reports to various business credit vendors. It can report to Ansania, Credit Safe, Experian, Dun & Bradstreet, or, Exper or Equifax. Okay, but it has to be in your business name, not yours. Now, keep in mind, it's easy to switch things over to your business name. Okay, so if something isn't in your business name, just switch it over to your business to your business name. All right. So the reason is the reason that is the case is because and the reason this is also why Equifax um, stopped allowing business accounts that are in the business owner's name. This is why they stopped allowing eCredible to report that information is because Equifax, for example, they don't want to like you got to keep in mind tax wise. There's a difference between business expenses and personal expenses. So they didn't want all these people who have like work from home businesses to get credit for their light bill and their phone bill and all, you know, cable bill for just because they work in their home office. Because technically that's not how it's supposed to work. As you know, if you if you do your own taxes or you have a tax professional that, you know, when you write off that uh, that home that uh, your home office, it's only a, a certain percentage. Right. You got two different methods, but you only get you don't, you don't get to write off all of your bills. You only get to write off a certain percentage of it. Right. So that's why. So just keep that in mind. But eCredible is a great service. I'm still subscribed with them right now, this very second. But if you want to learn more about eCredible, check out that video I made. OK, Salt River, you're on a roll. You got a lot of questions. <laughs> so would you recommend the Bank of America secured uh, business credit card? Yes, I would. The reason why is the Bank of America secured card is a tier three card. I want to let you guys know you can't just get approved for this card. If you got bad credit, you're going to need good credit. Remember, corporate credit cards are EIN only business credit cards require a PG. With that being said, um, yes, Bank of America, they actually do report. Um, they, I know they report to Experian at the very least. Um, I can't say they report to Dun & Bradstreet and Equifax, but they do report to Experian for sure, uh, whether it be the through the SPFE or directly. So yes, I do recommend the BOA um, secure uh, business card. It's a great way to build business credit. Now, um, e credit. Oh, I'm sorry, highlighted the wrong one. So Z Nichols says, "How can you rebuild or recover your credit if you miss payments?" Z, I hate to tell you this, but at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to dispute to remove late payments the way you can on personal credit. With business credit, if you miss a payment, all you can do is just keep on pushing and don't miss another payment. OK, that's just the truth. Just make sure that you don't miss any more payments and continue to make, if not early payments. Like that's honestly the best way to, to recover is to begin making early payments um, instead of on time payments. But as long as you are continuing to make on time payments and you continue to have what's called payment experiences, positive payment experiences, you will be able to bounce back and recover. Okay. Luxury car store says, does American Express report sole proprietor businesses to Experian and Equifax or only corporate cars? Good question. So 
here's something that some of you may not know about soap or prop soap props uh soap proprietors right there are a lot of different business credit cards and especially corporate cards that do not accept soul props. The reason being is there's no corporate veil. There's no protection for soul props. You're just an individual who is conducting business, right? You don't have an actual corporation. The only corporations are LLCs, partnerships, S corps and, and C corps, right? So because of this, um, to answer your question, it does report, um, but it may report on the SPFE to get to Experian and Equifax. But yes, um, American Express is supposed to report to all three, Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax, and Experian. Now, the thing is, I may be wrong, but I would not be surprised if, if you have a sole prop and you have an American Express, it may also report to your personal credit report. I can't guarantee. I'm just saying that's normally how soul prop works. But yeah, you, you definitely want to uh, look out for that. So Architect 360 Philly says, great info on businesscreditfacts.com. My company was listed four times and I just updated the three that had the wrong address. The sit code was also wrong. I have four business four business credit cards with timely payments, 36 and telescore. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm telling you, that's a free gym, okay? I'm gonna be dropping gems on these lives, man. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to help you all out. So yeah, for anybody else, right? If you missed it, just like Architect uh, 360 Philly said, you wanna go to businesscreditfacts.com. Click update your credit report and you want to make sure that any of those, um, you know, incorrect addresses, and it'll, it'll tell you, it'll say um, this link, this link right here, this result has uh, trade lines. And then this one doesn't. Anyone that you see that says it has a trade line attached to it, you definitely want to update that address so they can combine onto one credit report and you'll see your business credit score jump like almost guaranteed. No problem. No problem. Um, yeah, you definitely, you probably want to turn, you know, that sole prop into an LLC. I can't tell you what to do, but, um, you know, consult with your CPA to see, but I'm just telling you, you're going to hit a wall pretty fast if you have a sole prop in terms of funding, because there's just too many, um, cards and lines of credit and funding uh, programs that just literally will not accept applications from soul props. Okay. Cause there's just no protection. Uh, so, uh, Tilful is a new sec uh, secure business credit card. No PG. Yes. Yeah. Tilful is great. Um, have I made a video about Tilful? I think I have, if I have, if I haven't, I will <laughs> because yeah, Tilful is great. Tilful is another tier one charge card. Uh, and you can get that, yeah, with no PG. That's a that's a corporate card. Remember, corporate cards and charge cards, those are all corporate credit, not business credit. So yeah, they do not require um, a PG. Um, Eric uh, Eric Lantern says Wells Fargo is removing the secure business credit card next month. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Wells Fargo is kind of cleaning house. They're doing a right sizing. Um, of their business products. You know, they still have the food, like, and this is not just my business. So I'm going to just let you know, I have a Wells Fargo uh, business account. That's who I bank with my primary bank. And for example, I had a Wells Fargo Propel uh, car. That's a personal credit card that was co-branded with American Express. And you know, it was one of the first American Express cars I had. I was really excited. It's a Wells Fargo Propel. They just last month sent me a new car called the Wells Fargo um, Signature Series or something like that. It's thick, just like a Wells, just like an American Express car, but it's a Visa. And I was I was disappointed. I'm like, man, you know, I just lost the American Express car because they decided to switch uh, to this new signature car. So yeah, while Wells Fargo is cleaning house, they are removing and changing a lot of their um, products. So you, if you have a, any Wells Fargo products, you want to you know make sure you're checking your letters or whatever that they send you. 
to make sure that uh, you aren't going to lose something or, you know, have something changed. But yeah, Wells Fargo, they had a secure credit card that was great. It allowed you to build business credit because they report to the SBFE, the Small Business Financial Exchange. Then they changed it last year to where you had to be or had to have a Wells Fargo account in order to get it. And now they did announce that they're just getting rid of it altogether. Um, but if you already have a Wells Fargo secure business credit card, the good news is they should be upgrading, upgrading you to the basic Wells Fargo business credit card. You may have a low credit limit, but you know, at least it's a business credit card that you can use to, to build up. Um, thank you so much, uh, Rob Media Group. I'm trying, um, but Salt River says, am I planning to do a best of 2023 video for business credit? Yes, I have. I am. Um, I've, I've been making a lot of like personal credit videos and real estate videos lately, but yes, I'm going to, I'm going to get back to talking about business credit. Uh, to be honest, <clears throat> most of these lives are going to be business credit related because um, I don't want to just get in the habit of just keep making all these videos talking about different business credit vendors. Because in my experience, again, a lot of people turn into net 30 junkies and I don't want to be the local drug dealer for net 30 accounts. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I will. I will. I promise I will. I'm going to try to make one soon. Um, thank you so much, uh, Pencilhead family. I really appreciate all the positive feedback, but all right, guys, um, you know, we are close to, um, an hour and a half in, if you have no other questions, then we're going to go ahead and end it here. Um, I'm going to end with a, uh, I'm going to, this is going to be a shameless plug. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, I'm the CEO of green scale credit. Okay. Green scale credit, what we do, we do uh, multiple things, right? We do wholesaling because uh, we have green scale hosting. We're going to be getting into uh, midterm and short term rental soon. Uh, we do conferences. We do education. We're an education based business. So, of course, I have the Green Scale Academy, right? Matter of fact, let me put up a banner for that so you guys <clears throat> can check that out. But green scale credit, you know, is my business. Okay. If you go to greenscalecredit.com, you'll see all we have to offer, but credit restoration is the most uh, popular thing or service that we offer. So if you need help with your credit, definitely schedule a free consultation. Shameless plug. Um, I love to help out people. You know, I, I come from the real estate world, right? So I'm used to helping people get approved for homes. So if, whether it be 2023 or 2024, if your goal is to get into a home and become a homeowner uh, and you need to improve on your credit or remember, I've been harping on the fact that you need to improve your personal credit to get business funding. My favorite business funding product ever is business lines of credit. OK, business lines of credit are so overlooked. You can literally get a hundred thousand dollars after being with the bank for six months. If your personal credit scores are good. Okay. People are always trying to figure out how can you get six figure funding, a business line of credit with your local credit union, you know what I'm saying? And a local credit union, these small mom and pop credit unions that you drive past every day on your way to work or, to, or your daily commute, those are the credit unions that will get you the funding that you need. Stop sleeping on them. OK, but yeah, if you guys need help with your personal credit, let me know. Um, also, you know, we, we have a Capital Freedom Masterclass. All right. It's, it's pre-recorded. Um, I don't know when I'm going to do another one, probably like next month. But if you want to attend the masterclass and learn a lot more about personal, I'm not personal, about business credit, and how to qualify for six-figure funding and more about the FICO SBSS and a little bit about my journey and how I, uh, you know, became the person I am today through business credit. Uh, you know, definitely want to check that out at tinyurl.com forward slash Kelvin McNeil. Um, and uh, with that being said, guys, um, also, if you need to book a, a one-hour coaching call with me, um, if you want some dedicated time with me where I can, you can pick my brain about business credit. You can also click the link down in the description below. 
If you're interested in my course, which is called Greenscale Academy, you can check that out um, at Greenscale Credit. I'm um, sorry, GreenscaleAcademy.com, uh, where you can also attend the free training as well. But with that being said, guys, um, I really enjoyed this time. I'm going to show you this uh, commercial real quick uh, while I take a quick um, water break because I've been talking nonstop. And then when I come back, I have one more special announcement from you guys or for you guys. Meet Daniel. He owns a beautiful home, has a stable, high paying job and recently purchased his dream car. Life is great until one day he, along with hundreds of his coworkers, are laid off. Now Daniel is unable to pay bills for several long months. Now his home is under foreclosure and his car was repossessed. Daniel was able to find a new job, but unfortunately the damage has already been done. His credit was ruined. It seemed like there was nothing he could do until a friend told him about our company Greenscale Credit. At Greenscale, we help improve your credit wellness, allowing you to be approved for the best credit cards, access the lowest rates on auto loans, home loans, and more, but most importantly, giving you a fresh start. Our team of friendly experts will walk you through the entire process while educating you along the way. With our help, Daniel was able to remove collection accounts, late payments, and repossessions from his credit report resulting in significant increases in his credit score. Thanks to Greenscale Credit, he was able to save his home and purchase a new car with a lower interest rate. Life is finally getting better for him. Bad things happen to good people. The good news is bad credit is temporary. Take the first step on the road to recovery and go to www.greenscaleacredit.com to sign up for your free credit consultation today. All right, guys, again, go ahead to go to, you know, greenscalecredit.com. Go ahead and get your free consultation if you need help with your credit, whether it be student loans, late payments, bankruptcies, collection accounts, you name it, we got you. Now, as you see, if you can direct your attention to the banner at the bottom of the screen, if you're interested in Greenscale Academy or you just have questions about business credit, I got a gift for you. You can you can book me for a free consultation, what we call a free discovery call. It's going to be a 15 minute call. You can speak to me. I'm going to give you a call and I can answer any questions you have in reference to business credit. And especially, again, if you are interested in Green Skill Academy. OK, now, with that being said, um, I hope you guys enjoy, especially the people rewatching this on the replay. I hope you enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, and for most of us, the evening. Enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, and thanks for watching. And I'll catch y'all next Sunday.